When was the last time a new blockbuster lived up to large expectations for yourself? For me, I can't remember. It's a great feeling when expectations are met, but we're now at the point in which every big movie that's come out over the last couple of years hasn't met my level of expectation. That feeling sucks. Going into a theater with massive expectations and getting let down. Although, the level of letdown can vary. For instance, Doom Part 2 from this year was a great blockbuster, but I did have a couple large issues. Because of that, I left the movie a tad underwhelmed. Whereas in 2018, Incredibles 2 was my most anticipated film of the year. And afterwards, couldn't believe just how bad it was. Many will still disagree with that statement, but for someone like myself who's loved the original since I was 7 years old, Incredibles 2 was a massive step down when compared to the first. Sadly, this wasn't the only time a disappointment of that magnitude had occurred for me at the cinema either. Thanks a lot, Disney. <laughs> But yes, let's focus this topic on recent films. So I made a video at the start of 2024 about how 2023 was lackluster in the greatness department. To this day, I can't name a single movie I love from that year. Sorry. But what hurt most were the disappointing blockbuster experiences. At least 2022 delivered Top Gun Maverick, an incredible blockbuster. But in 2023, films such as Oppenheimer, Barbie, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, and so on and so forth, didn't live up to my expectations. Maybe my hopes and dreams for such films were too high. Nonetheless, that sad feeling of disappointment was there after my viewing for all of those. Again, sorry to the Oppenheimer fanboys, but that's how I genuinely felt. Anyway, I wanted to start 2024 anew. I thought maybe, just maybe, this year can deliver some truly stellar blockbusters. However, the amount of times I've left a movie theater in 2024 with that sad feeling of disappointment again after experiencing the latest blockbuster is at an unbelievable number. Because, well, those expectations haven't been met for a single blockbuster yet again in 2024. The year is isn't over, things could change, but I'm not holding out hope. Let's just talk about a few of the biggest blockbuster disappointments of the year thus far, shall we? We'll begin with Kung Fu Panda 4. Okay, my expectations weren't as high as they were for Kung Fu Panda 3, but like, I had reasonably high expectations for the fourth installment. Well, guess what? This movie is bad. I was generous with my first watch, but in time, I've realized just how crap Kung Fu Panda 4 truly is. They could have gone in many different creative directions, but what they ultimately chose was the most generic route possible, all while making Poe look like a big fat joke in the process. I also had high expectations this year for movies like Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, Furiosa, A Quiet Place Day One, and Deadpool and Wolverine. But, you guessed it, my expectations weren't met for any of those either. When I look at Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, Furiosa, and A Quiet Place Day 1, it's not that these movies are bad, but in comparison to their franchise's peak films, I felt underwhelmed. I always want the newest installment of great franchises to be as good, if not better, than the franchise's absolute best movies. But, in my opinion, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes doesn't hold a candle to Dawn, Furiosa's visual effects look like complete garbage compared to Fury Roads, and A Quiet Place Day 1, despite having the biggest blockbuster feel of that franchise so far, doesn't compete with the Krasinski installments. That then leaves us with Deadpool and Wolverine. Listen, it's a solid, entertaining movie. But as I said in my Deadpool ranking video, it does nothing for the MCU's future. It was originally thought to be this huge pivot in the right direction for the universe. Instead, it turned out to be just a fun movie. Nothing epic or crazy, in my opinion. 
Unfortunately, that wouldn't be the first time Disney and Marvel tricked us. So all of these big 2024 releases failed to reach my high expectations, and simply weren't as good as the best movies from those franchises. So do I have any hope for other blockbusters coming out before the end of the year? Well, I don't know. My expectations will be rather low since I've been let down time and time again for every big release since the start of 2023. We're getting the second Joker in October, but as much as I want to have high expectations for this, I'm not a fan of musicals. If that's what most of Joker 2 is, I can't imagine I'll like it. 2019's Joker, I believe, is nearly flawless and my favorite movie of that year. From the moment I saw that film, I thought it'd be a dumb decision to make a sequel. I mean, where else could you take a story like this? Todd Phillips himself even said Arthur Fleck might just be a random guy, and not the actual Joker we all know. I guess they didn't have a clue what to do with the sequel either, but were forced to make one because of the last movie's box office returns. So they thought a crazy musical would be the best direction. As much as I'm praying it pays off, I cannot expect the film to be anywhere close to as good as the first one. If we're talking most anticipated movie of 2024 though, it's been Gladiator 2 all along. Then the trailer released, and what I noticed was an overuse of CGI, a terrible soundtrack choice, and a story so unoriginal that it looks like they copy and pasted this directly from the original. It wouldn't surprise me if the sequel is close to three hours too, because what is a movie nowadays unless it's really long and boring? Okay, I could be wrong. There's a shot Gladiator 2 is actually fantastic. I do have a small sliver of hope for that outcome. At least the cast is awesome. But in order for this movie to be great, there needs to be minimum CGI, loads of violence, and a story that can stand on its own. Although, I don't think I've loved one of Ridley Scott's movies since Kingdom of Heaven. So, uh, yeah. My hopes for this one aren't through the roof anymore especially after that trailer. That then takes us into the future of big movies post-2024. And you know what? I really don't know if I should make a top 10 most anticipated movies list ever again for any upcoming year, because I'm not super enthusiastic for 2025's blockbusters anymore. For example, Mission Impossible 8. Dead Reckoning Part 1 was at the top of my list for most anticipated movies of 2023, but it did not live up to the previous entry Fallout, with a convoluted plot, long runtime, and mid-tier action scenes. Fallout, meanwhile, took the world by storm when it hit theaters in 2018. I expected Dead Reckoning to deliver more of the same, but unfortunately, that was not at all the case. I know we have another Jurassic World installment coming out in 2025 too, but how could I possibly have any anticipation for that movie now? Especially when Jurassic World Dominion was one of the biggest missed opportunities in film history, churning out instead a huge pile of trash. I'm sure people will be hyped for Fantastic Four though in 2025. Me? Uh, not really. The MCU hasn't proved itself worthy of my total investment in five years, so until that changes, I'm not going to care about a second reboot of the Fantastic Four, despite how excited other people may be now for the film next summer after this moment. Finally, Avatar Fire and Ash. The previous entry, The Way of Water, was one of my most anticipated movies of all time, thanks to to the groundbreaking 2009 film. And to this day, I love this franchise's first installment. But when you compare The Way of Water to the first movie, it did not live up to my expectations. Therefore, I'm not going to have high expectations for another Avatar until proven otherwise. In this day and age, I can't rely on huge movies to get the job done. We're at a point where every single franchise either has far too many installments or simply rinses and repeats the same formula over and over again. So from now on, I'll be counting on indie movies. I can't imagine any of the big blockbusters coming out over the next few years being great. Maybe Mission Impossible 8 will turn things around for that franchise, but other than that, I don't have much hope. I'll still watch everything, however, I won't expect any upcoming big budget movies to be some of my favorites of all time. Nothing has come out of that magnitude since Top Gun Maverick, 
The last two years have been underwhelming from the theaters as a whole, in my opinion. But as stated, what's mostly hurt are the countless disappointing blockbusters failing to live up to my expectations. So those are my thoughts on the current state of blockbusters, as well as what the future holds for them. Therefore, I want to ask you, have you felt as underwhelmed as I have about all the new blockbusters from the past couple of years? Let me know in the comments whether you agree or disagree. Anyway, thank you all so much as always for watching this video essay. Later this week, I will have my ranking of all seven Alien movies, so get ready for that. Don't forget, if you haven't done so already, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you guys next week. See you then. Peace.